What's up Serpa Squad, I'm back with another project. In this one I'm going to make a pond theme riparium primarily with materials that I have around the house. Here's a 5.5 gallon aquarium that I bought months ago for a different project. As is it won't work for my vision so we'll transform it into a rentless tank. A wise man once said you can't start an operation without the gear and this one is no exception. Transforming a tank isn't very hard to do if you take your time. On a smaller tank like this, I simply go around the inside of the trim with a razor scraper to break the silicone seal. Once the seal is broken, the trim should pull right off. That said, you have to make sure that all of the silicone is cut or you'll end up damaging the aquarium like I did here. A similar process was done to the bottom trim, but I also used a paint scraper. Here's a better look at the number I did to the front pane of glass. As I'm sure you could imagine, we can't use a tank like this, so let's fix it. What I do first is cut the seams with a razor blade. I'm not cutting in between the glass here, I'm only cutting through the silicone. To release the seal between the panes of glass, I go in from the top with the razor scraper and down to the bottom of the tank, repeating the process on the other side. Then I cut along the bottom seam with a blade until the glass pulls away. I don't like things to go to waste, so we'll reuse the broken pane. I measured and marked the glass so it could be broken down to a smaller size. Using a straight edge as a guide, I scored the glass and snapped it along the line. We can't do anything else before removing the old silicone, so that's what we'll do next. Using the razor scraper, I made sure to remove any remnants of the seam. Applying new silicone over top of old silicone doesn't create a good seal, so it's best to remove everything and start from scratch. The manufacturers typically only polish the exposed edges of glass. As such, I always like to sand the newly exposed edges and any pieces that I cut. Trust me, a quick sand makes all of the difference and is totally worth it. Doing this makes a total mess, so make sure you have a shop vac on hand. From here I always like to give the glass a good rinse to remove any excess debris. Once clear, I wipe down the glass with rubbing alcohol to ensure the surface of the glass is as clean as possible for the new silicone. Before applying it, I always tape everything off to make clean beads. Per usual, I'm using GE Silicone 1 100% silicone. As I've said time and time again, this is a great DIY alternative to what's typically sold as aquarium grade silicone. To start, I applied a bead along the front of the tank. I set the cut piece of glass into the silicone, wiped off any excess, and taped it in place. A bead of silicone was then applied to the interior of the tank. I smoothed it out with my finger and removed the tape. Everything sat to cure for 24 hours before removing the tape from the front. I also went around with the scraper to remove any excess silicone. All was looking good so it was time for a test fill. As expected the tank held water so I drained it down for the next step. I think it looks pretty good if you ask me. This one will be scaped with river stones and gravel that are left over from the pond. They came in pretty dirty so I made sure to rinse them down really well before use. I did the same with some of my plants. Per usual I removed all of the dirt they came in and sprayed them down until they were clean, bare root plants. While outside I grabbed a few handfuls of dirt from a planter bed in my garden. I'll also be using a few pieces of manzanita wood to scape with. Before setting up the tank with these materials, I cut out a piece of egg crate light diffuser with wire cutters. As I've explained before, this will help evenly distribute the weight of the stones along the bottom of the tank. At this point, the tank is finally ready for the preliminary scape. Before adding any of the substrates, I created a general layout that will give me a good starting point for the rest of the design. I took a picture on my phone for reference and removed everything. I decided to do something different with this tank and I'm going to set it up using the wall stad method. 
If you're unfamiliar with what that is, basically it's the use of regular soil capped off with gravel instead of manufactured aqua soil. I only added a thin layer to start so that it would give me a good base for the landscape. In doing so, I tried to replicate the layout I had previously and fine tuned it as I went. Like I always say, it pays off to be meticulous when hardscaping. An interesting composition and appropriate placement of items will take you far. The idea of course is to create a layout that doesn't look man made. On that, I get a lot of questions about how I place items or how I design. My best piece of advice is not to think. Let the materials do the thinking for you and use your intuition. If you think too much it tends to overcomplicate things. After putting in the work, I ended up with a more refined version of my initial layout. To make sure I could retain this look, I super glued the manzanita wood onto the stones. It doesn't take much, just find a few spots where the wood touches a stone and add a small drop of glue. It should only take about 5 minutes for everything to set up, but if you use water as a catalyst, it can speed up the process. Before you go all keyboard commando on me, yes, this is a safe practice that's commonly used among aquascapers. Once the glue dries, it's non-toxic and waterproof. In other words, you're fine to use this with livestock. If I hadn't done this, the wood most likely would have floated because it's not waterlogged. I also think it helps out in the long run so I don't ruin my scapes if I bump into something. Anyway, I finished adding most of the larger stones to get the main components of the scape in place. Before moving on to the plants, I used my trusty fan brush to move the soil to the back of the tank where the bulk of the plants will be grown. The first plants that I added were a Syngonium potophyllum white butterfly and a dwarf aquarium lily. I added these two first so that I could manually bury their roots in the soil without making a total mess and to keep the plants completely intact. After getting a good inch of soil down, I capped everything off with pea pebbles. Then I transitioned into the front of the scape with some sand. At this point the tank is ready for water. In case you're wondering, after modification the tank holds roughly 2 gallons of water. Now that we're filled, let's add some more plants. On the left side I added a handful of Hemigraphus raponda and a few segments of Alternanthra Focordia Christmas tree. I know it doesn't look like much now, but give it time to grow in. As is, the scape looks alright, but it needs more texture. No problem, to achieve a more natural look I worked in some gravel and stones to create better transitions between elements. Doing so really took the scape to the next level. To finish this off we need some plants in the water area. I trimmed a few segments of Ludwigia repens rubin from the Blue Dream shrimp tank and planted them in the left side of the tank. I also pulled a few segments of Anubius nana petite from the Danio tank and nestled them in the driftwood. Lastly I added a few segments of Acorus graminius minimus aureus to the riparium area. Wow that's quite a mouthful. Everything looked good so I drained the tank down and filled it back up with some clean water. I also pulled some salvinia from one of my other riparians to top off the water area. To complete the planting for this video, I picked up a few talansia. These are simply super glued onto the wood. And that's the final product. I really like how it turned out and I'm glad that the glass cracked earlier on. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have redesigned the tank in this way. This setup is still young so it needs time to grow. My long term vision is for the entire surface of the water to be covered by lily pads and other floating plants as well as a lot of riparian growth. I'll most likely add a few more plants as I go but I purposely left a lot of open space so that we can actually stock this with something. I have a pretty good idea of what I want to put in here, but if you have any suggestions that aren't a beta, let me know down in the comments. Most likely I won't need any sort of filtration for this setup, but as I work with it I'll get a better idea of what's needed. Chances are that the plants and occasional water changes should be enough to keep it nice and clean. There's one more thing that I'll mention that gets brought up any time that I show them, and that is how do I water the Talansia if I can't dip them in water. Like I've said before, air plants aren't getting watered in nature by someone going around and dipping them in water. All you have to do is occasionally miss them. I can't wait to see how this one progresses though. I think it's really going to come full circle once the plants mature. 
I believe that's a good stopping point. Before you move on, please take a moment to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. If you like the content I'm putting out, want to see more, and are interested in supporting me, that's honestly one of the best things you can do, aside from subscribing and turning on notifications, but I'll assume that you did that already. If not, what are you waiting for? Anyway, I'll see you on the next one, Serpa Squad. Take care and peace.